Hello, Donna Cato here. Welcome to my channel. So glad you came. Now today, what we're going to be doing is something that is pretty simple, can be very simple, um, and can be very useful and fun to do. And that is to make words, cane words in clay. Now here I have a couple examples. This is Zoe, my little border collie. She's not here anymore. Docky, he was a sweet boy. Ozzy, he's not here anymore. Ditto, still with us. Ditto, black kitty. Dulce, Dulce is also not with us. I've never had a rabbit, but I made a rabbit cane and then I made Bun Bun because I thought it might be cute. And then Mochi, this was my mother's dog who we took after she passed on. And she was an American Eskimo dog. She was a pistol, but her name was Mochi. Now, here are some of the canes. Bun Bun, Doc, Mochi. I guess I'm going to have to make some more canes. CBE, this was for uh, Clayback East. I had made some canes, and I put a little slice on each one of them. Blue, blue, there you go. So now the simplest way to make um, word canes is to treat each letter as a separate entity, like Zo, Z-O-E. It gets a little more, or mochi, uh, it gets more difficult when you have something like my signature cane, which is here. And you can see that the K is actually on top of the D. And so that creates a, a little bit of a spacing problem, or it can. So here is the bigger version. This is one end. It's not perfect, but I wanted to show you what happened on the other side so that you can see the, the trouble you can get into when you're trying to do something like inserting a letter over another. You can see right here, here's the, the curve and the D, but you can see it's off right here. It is not aligned properly. And that is because I did not remove enough of the clay in order to be able to insert it so that where the uh, lines cross, they, they should have come together much better than they did. So it just creates uh, another set of problems. It's not an impossibility, certainly, but something you have to be aware of. Now, all letters are not created equal. For instance, an I or an L, much, much easier to make than an S. <laughs> okay? Uh, an O is fine because, you know, you'll use a circle cutter. But um, anyway, most letters are not that difficult. Now, one of the reasons I'm making this is because my dear friend Ray uh, asked me to make her a signature cane for her work and I am more than happy to do it. And it's also an opportunity to actually do this uh, as a tutorial for you so you can see how easy it is. Now, what I have here is the background color, which is going to be black. And in terms of the shape, it's rather like a block of clay, just a little bit smaller. It's the same thickness, but it's just a bit smaller. The dimensions are smaller, but it's very close. Now, once I make this cane for her, she'll have RN for life. Seriously, she'll have it for life. Because by the time you make it and you reduce it down to a size like this, well, you don't have to make many of these canes in your life. You can trust me on that. So now the letters themselves are going to be white. So I've rolled my white clay through setting number four, and I've cut strips that are the same thickness or very close to the same thickness of the slab. So you can see. And I just did that so that I don't have to stop and do it as I'm working. Okay, so now we're going to sheet the background color, which is black. Now, sheeting in this case is very important because the slab will be many layers like this. And when we reduce it, if there's, there's any air between the layers, it'll split 
as we're stretching it out this way, you'll start getting splits. So you have to sheet the clay pretty carefully. So this has been rolled through the thickest setting of my pasta machine. And what I'm going to do is take my acrylic rod. <laughs> okay, when you're using acrylic, you have to be really careful because it tends to pick up every little bit of clay lying around, okay? Well, mine does. Okay, so let's just sheet the clay by rolling from one side to the other. And the goal here is to push any air out. Okay, we wanna push any air out. Okay, now clearly this is not thick enough. So I will cut it in half and then lift half. Just pull it up, put it face down because that's the smoother side, isn't it? I just rolled it over, sheet it down, roll again. Try to get all that air out or if there is any air. You know what, there's always air. What am I talking about? Ta-ta. Okay. Still not thick enough. I'm going to cut it in half again, 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 and stack. and it's getting close, I'm just gonna roll it down. So this actually turned out to be six sheets rolled through the thickest setting of the pasta machine. And this will also help join the sheets together. All right, let's just cut. Da, 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 da. and get rid of some of the excess on the side. Now, I put a little too much black blackout in. I could have gotten away with less. So uh, the problem can be uh, that you put in so much blackout, it softens your clay. Because, it, you know, it is kind of a clay softener, too. All right, so this is what you want. You don't want to see any layers or any spaces. Now, there's a tiny little space there. But this is the goal. You want the slab to look like it's just one slab, not six layers or six sheets of clay. Okay, and as I said, this is important for later because if you do have those separations, we're going to be reducing this way, pulling the clay up like that. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is split these because, well, first of all, let me show you what the design is. Now, Ray's work tends to be rather, you know, she had an ethnic kind of feel to it. So I thought rather than making an R that has the traditional round top, I angled it off like this. So her R is much more angular uh, than perhaps in some other instances, but I thought that it was kind of consistent, more consistent with, uh, with her work and with what she likes to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this part of the R. So I'm going to separate, oh, <laughs> Hello. So what I did was I drew, and here's the N. 
like so. And this, the, uh, the little leg of the R actually meets the upright of the N, all right? And this line here, and that line there, well, those are just the boundaries of the letters. The letters will not go all the way to the edge, okay? So I think that's clear. So now let's cut along the spine of the N. Cut straight down. I'm going to set that aside. And now we will cut here. Okay. And I'm going to cut this. Just place that there. Now I'm going to take the white and I'm going to place it a oh, little narrow. That's okay. I think I want this to be sharp, so I'm just not going to wrap it around the edge. But like so. Now you can see that I did take this and I let that white clay go further beyond. This is the back of the R right here. Okay. All right, so at this point, what I need to do at the, on this side, well actually, yeah, right in through here is I am going to insert just a little piece of black. And it's also rolled through the same setting. To take up that space. Okay, and then let's do the same thing up here. All right, now I'm just going to put this back like so. All right. I can even put this top on too. And what I'm trying to do is align this line with the uh, with the original line. All right. Now, actually, I made a little mistake. Sorry, I've got to put this in, don't I? So I'm just going to cut and try to cut straight down. and then insert the white. Make sure that that's good. And now I'll put it in. I mean, making my signature cane is kind of like I could almost do it in my sleep, but I've never done rays before. So now let's put it back together. Okay. And what I need is to fill that space in, don't I? So I'm going to... Make an angled cut, 
put one sheet of black and I think I'm gonna need a second sheet. It's not a problem. Let me do a second sheet like so. Fill it in. And if there's too much clay here, I'm not going to push it in. I will just take my blade and cut what I think is the excess. And that way, when I put the end in, the back of the end here, it will be nice and straight. It won't be lumpy. Okay, I just want to make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is cut here, get rid of this little piece of white. This is like a puzzle. And I am going to need all these little pieces I'm cutting off when I put it back together. So try to remember which pieces you are putting where. There's a little bit of white there. I'll try to get rid of that. Now I'm going to cut the back of the R. Let me put this. Hmm. I'm going to cut a little more because I could see that this wasn't quite the same thickness. All right, so let's just do it. Now I will align that all the way down. Cut it off. Now I have the R. Now this piece, I'm going to get rid of that white. And actually, uh, it might just be easier if I just cut it off like so. If it's too deep, I can just roll more black clay. And put that back right there. So there is Ray's R. Now let me just smooth this. So as I said, I, I want this line to be nice and straight. I don't want it to be with that. Let me cut a little bit off. That's better. Okay, so there's the R. Now I'm going to take the white. I'm going to align it with the top and the bottom. Make a nice clean cut. like so, then I'm going to put put it back together again. Now, as I'm working, you can see that the, the letters have become taller, and that's because of where these two, the back and the top of the R, meet. 
that is above the original line. Now, I don't really care about that too much. I think that it's really fine. Um, but what it now means is in this case, I should probably redraw the lines. Now, I'm going to leave that right there because where it overlaps, I think that's going to be fine. But now, the bottom, well, let's just trim it off later. Okay, so now I'm going to cut from that corner straight down. Try to cut it straight down. And face it like so. And here I have a choice as well. Do I want it to be the same width as I started? Yeah, you know what? I do. So I have a bit of a problem because I need more clay here. But I think it might be easier if I simply... fill in the hole along the entire side. And then align this like so. And now I can cut along here. And that I'm going to do, and I'm just going to trim away the excess later. So let's take the white, put the white on, trim it away. All right, so there's the R and the N. I'm gonna trim that away and let's just put this back together. I'm gonna turn it around so I have a nice flat side like that. All right, now, I have to trim the excess. Like so. And then from this side, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, good deal. Now let's trim the side. That's too much black. We don't need all that black clay. And now I will put black on these two sides and uh, do a final trim. I think I can probably trim a little bit more away. And then I will reduce it for her. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so what I did was I rolled a sheet of black clay through the thickest setting of my pasta machine, and then I cut two strips. I put one strip on top and one strip on the bottom. Then I took my blade and I trimmed neatly all around. And I think I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to add more uh, black clay around the perimeter. But at this point, you know, if you wanted to put a thin white and then a thin black, you could do things like that as well. But this is just going to be a very plain signature cane, kind of like mine, except without the uh, overlapping letters. So let's reduce this. 
And I have to tell you, the person that I learned how to do this from was a woman in Colorado by the name of Eileen Loring, L-O-R-I-N-G. And she is unfortunately not with us anymore. She was just a wonderful lady who loved clay and was just a wealth of, uh, of information. And she was very good at figuring out very simple ways of doing things and then explaining those simple ways so that others could do them as well. Yeah, it's been a while. She's been gone, but she was, she was kind of a Colorado legend, I think. And she was very sweet. All right. Well, the clay is nice and noodly. It's moving. So let me see. It's kind of hanging back in there. Well, it's going to. I mean, this is far from the ideal shape you want to make canes and reduce. You know, the face of the cane was very large uh, compared to the thickness of the clay. So that can be creates challenges for us. Okay, so let me work on it. You guys have seen me reduce in other tutorials, so I don't think you need to watch me, but I'll be back when this is reduced. All right, so I reduced the cane, and I reduced it down to this size, and I'm not going to reduce this piece any further. I'm just going to send it to Ray, and she can reduce it as she needs to. I did, however, reduce two pieces because it's a little easier for me to do it right now. So she can work off of this piece and this piece. And then when she needs to reduce the other one, she can. Uh, I also made her one with a rounded R. R N. And this, you see these? This is enough uh, signature cane for probably her lifetime. So I will carefully pack this and send it to her. So now you've seen how simple uh, making letters and clay can be. And it can be quite simple depending on the letter, and depending on the specific design. For instance, this is a more difficult design. I've already talked about that. And it requires that you do more careful trimming than I did here. That's why the D is broken. But if you start simple and work your way up to the more complex, I think you'll find and uh, you'll figure out the best ways to work. Okay, so for Michael's cane, uh, cane I just grabbed a bunch of scrap clay. I'm going to mix the black out in and we're going to turn this clay black. There isn't a heck of a lot of white. It'll be fine. I'll be back. So I'm actually going to do a very simple M, very much like Ray's N, okay? So let me take, eh, I'll just do it this way. So I'm going to leave a border around. like so. And the simplest M is just like so, where the actual M is this and this, and the middle is just that V that is cut out. So that's what this design is going to be. I'm going to erase this and erase this. Now, what's the W going to be? It's going to be this. You got an M. You got a W. And they'll go side by side. All right, so let me prepare the rest, and I will be back. All right, so I have rolled my white clay through setting number two. Now, remember when I made rays? I had rolled that white clay through setting number four. But I was creating both the R and the N. 
Now, in this case, I'm going to make an M that is going to also turn into a W. And that's why I'm making this a little thicker, because if I roll it through four and then I reduce it down, the line may get much thinner. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to take a nice straight cut here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just cut diagonally like this. And then I will cut diagonally the other way, corner to corner, corner to corner. All right. Now, I'm just going to move this over. I do not like sticky clay. My clay got a little bit stickier than I like. And I did have to add more of the uh, conditioner to this because it, I wanted it to match. Dang. All right, so first I'm going to just position this. I think I'll go over a little. It doesn't hurt because I'm going to trim it. It's a little bit thin, but that's okay too. Boom. Then let's put it on the other side. I really did make it too thin though. Dang. Okay, so that's So let's put this back together, like so. And this is one of those processes that, you know, just kind of grows. Now, if I do want this absolutely at that point, though, there, you can do it just like that. Then on this side, <laughs> because the uh, cane overall does not have to be any specific size, these canes get reduced down. I kind of lost my lines, but I don't think it's critical. Okay, there we go. Because I have enough over here. All right, now. Uh -huh. Now here I can cut this first, or I can cut the sides first. I think I'm going to go here first. Why? I don't know. It's making sense to me today. And this will all get separated. See, this is why I like clay that's not sticky. Even though this is stickier than normal, I can still take things apart, which is what I want. I want to be able to take things apart. Okay. So, do I want this line outside? Nope. So, you see right here, this line right there, the line that separates the black from the white, that's where I'm going to cut. Okay, and I'm gonna cut straight, as straight as I can down like that. Eliminate the white. Then I'm going to repeat on the other side straight down like so pull the white off keep the black <laughs> ok 
Okay, you gotta check both sides too, kids. Might not meet exactly, but you gotta check both sides. Okay, I'm gonna take this, maybe it's a little wider. What do you think? Now this will go here. Nope, I managed to cut them all too narrow. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so here we go. And this is not a very stylized letter. You can add curly cues and all kinds of stuff if you wanted. My letters tend to be very simple. Okay, so there's M. Now let's cut N. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna put this back on because you gotta rebuild the letter. You have to put the um, the clay back along the sides. You can always trim later, which you're going to have to do. Okay, now let's trim the bottom. And take your time when you do this. I talk about this all the time. It's not a race, right? We live in a world where everything happens so fast and that's not always best. So just take your time and enjoy the process. Working slower can uh, have dividends for you in terms of the quality of your work. and paying attention to details can really pay off in the end. It's quite easy to get caught up in the need for speed. You know, in our daily lives, we have to move so fast sometimes. That's not always the best way, is it? Okay, so here are some of the ends that I, I chopped away. So let's just take advantage of those. I'm going to just stick that back there. Let's take this one, put it here like so. And now I will cut my border around again. All right, so there's the M that will also be a W. Now, of course, I could have designed it so that the, the uprights are angled like that, but I decided I would make it kind of simple today. Now, I'm gonna shave some of this off the top. You know, my white clay was too narrow. So I'm just going to lop some off. I should have done a better job measuring, but I just kind of eyeballed it. Okay, I'm not gonna cut any more. I know some people are probably very nervous the way I was cutting. But you know, if you cut, first of all, if you anchor your pieces against your work surface, you can do quite a bit of cutting. 
just like that. Right? And if you cut slow, and slightly arc your blade as you cut. You will find that you can do this quite easily. But it is important that this clay slab is pretty much anchored against your work surface as mine is. All right, so now I'm going to reduce. Da, 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 da. I think I'm going to cut a little bit more away. I think I want the letters a little closer together. Just remember, this is going to be used twice. I'm going to flip it over. So whatever this black is here, it's going to be twice that. Okay, so let's do it. And as I'm doing this, I'm actually kind of pushing down here at the base pressing the sides, but sort of pushing down at the base. And I think that that helps because it's sort of, uh, I'm pushing the face of the cane down here, down to my uh, work surface. Now, this was a side that was clearly, I had too much black clay because I had cut my strips too narrow. Dang. So don't do that. Don't cut your strips too narrow as I did. like this you see just little bits this would have been so much better if I had just cut the strips the white strips wide enough I'm a dummy I'm a dummy the good news is I can make this black again Yay me. Okay, so there's the M. Now, I'm going to cut, I'm not going to cut the other side. Because you know what? I'm going to reduce these separately. I'm going to reduce it long, and then I'm going to put them together. Because you remember what happened with the, uh, you remember what happened here, right? Okay, so let me work on that, and I will be back. Okay, so I'm still reducing, and this clay is moving out really nicely. 
nice and soft. So when it gets to this point, you do a lot of twisting and a very slow pulling, not too fast. Let the clay stretch out with you. But yeah, this is the good side. This is the good times in reduction. Okay, so just slowly. You can even bring it back together, kind of bring it in and out. Flip it to the other side. Every now and then you can stroke the sides. Were I to do this again, I wouldn't have trimmed off this because, you know, it makes kind of a nice handle to grip on the ends. So I'm just stretching now, just pulling both ends slowly and gently apart. And the clay is responding nicely. Any areas that are too thick, you just want to address those. You'll see them, and then you will just simply address them. Okay, I think we're almost there. But I really don't want to get into a position where this has to be reduced later. Or if so, it will only be reduced just a bit, not very much. Okay. So I will stop here. Let's cut the ends off. Find the good part. Oh, that wasn't... <laughs> I didn't have to cut much off there. Actually, I cut too much. I didn't take my own advice. Now here's where I just have to chop until I find the end. I'm getting there slowly. Dang, all of this could have been good. But I made a boo-boo. I made a boo-boo. Boo-boo. And you know what? Okay, it was really a dumb one. <laughs> but you see, I do these things for you guys. All right, so here, oh, one side's a little bit larger than the other. That's okay. Let me try to reduce one side, one end, make them match more closely. Pretty good, pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna measure and cut in half. Because here's another way you can really waste a lot if you don't measure. Okay, so that is 12 inches right there, 12, 16, 18, looks to be about 20, so I'm going to cut from this side. Okay, so if it's 20 inches, of course all I need are 10. That doesn't look right. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, from the end, let's just do nine, oops, oopsie, approximately, now let's bring them together, Here's the thing. 
these two, the M and the W, will be the most alike at this specific point. Why? Because I cut the I cut the uh, cane in half, and then flipped it up. So these are absolutely as close to identical as any cane slices will be. These will be the most different because they're at opposite ends. Okay. So when you're doing kaleidoscoping, that kind of thing, that's a helpful thing to remember. Now, these are not bad at all. So this is the end where they're the most different. This is the end where they are the most alike. Okay. Now, you're going to work your way down and just make sure that they're joined nicely that way. Now, to reduce this, because they're nice and it's nice and warm at this point, I will continue the stretching. And at this point, it's mostly lightly stroking the sides, pulling and stretching out to reduce. And I really want to get this done now because the clay will never be as easy to reduce as it is at this moment. It only gets harder as the, as the cane sits. Now, of course, because you're reducing or I'm reducing this so small at this point, uh, I'm going to have to have a place to store it where it's not going to get ruined. I will show you the way I store mine. See, I've just got all my little canes in here. And these are very old, so they're kind of dry, but there they are. And I've learned to keep that little box kind of handy. Because I'm making so many things these days. Okay, I'm going to cut it in the middle. Let's see what we have. Well, it's a WM, but it's an MW too. Okay, so that is this little tutorial. Michael, you wrote to me in the comments. If you tell me your address, I will ship you an M and a W. All right, so thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something uh, that's useful to you. And uh, until we meet again, I'm Donna Cato. Bye.